You're watching The Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlamagne the God, Angela Yee, DJ Envy is on vacation. I was wondering, I was like, either that or he got real black. Like, <laughs> like, he, <laughs> you know, all of us go through skin changes. We go through skin complexion changes. Then. <laughs> <laughs> like he said, hey, nigga, hold this for me. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd he go? Where'd he, where'd he St. Martin. Go? Yeah, St. Martin. St. Yeah. Martin. Oh, he didn't even go to the DR? St. Martin's in the United States. He don't go to the the PR, the DR. Is he Dominican? I thought you go to the DR when you got a uh, when you single. You don't go to the DR is when you got he, a family. Is, is he, he's with his whole family. He's Dominican. Five kids. He's Dominican. Yeah. Yeah. He's not and Dominican. He didn't go back he's to Dominican. Dominican. What is he Puerto Rican? Not Dominican. He's don't, black. Call, don't call Puerto Ricans Dominicans. They get real upset. <laughs> what they is get he? Mad. He's, he ain't black. Yes, he is. They don't make niggas that complexion no more. <laughs> he's black. As, <laughs> as envy. <laughs> I bet you he tell you, nah, bro, I'm Dominican. <laughs> he's Dominican. If, if, if not, he's Puerto Rican, and they used to call him Chocolate and Negrito Sucio. I would say he's Dominican. He wears white jeans. <laughs> Most Dominicans <laughs> wear white jeans. <laughs> With no socks. I've never seen and him wear white jeans. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen him wear jeans with Let me stop zippers. before I get cut by a Dominican. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Me, 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 me sorry. Me gusto. Me no, no me gusto. Uh, can Dominicans raise hell for comedians? We, when we had, we, had, we had Chris Rock here a couple weeks ago, he said the, uh, the people to stay away from, as far as joke-wise, is the transgender community. I never heard somebody say Dominicans. Nah, you, you can hit everybody, man. I, I believe I, you'd be an equal opportunity offender, and you can say whatever you want and do whatever you want. It's just how you say it. Yeah. You know, if you do a joke that makes... Here's a good joke. If you can make the people that you're talking about Laugh the loudest. Got you. Then you got a good joke. So if you make a joke about transgenders and they laugh, yeah, then you Dave got a good Chappelle joke. had a funny joke about transgenders. If they laugh so hard <laughs> that they dress come up and you can see they meet, it's a good, <laughs> it's a hell of a joke. <laughs> now, Marlon, you do have your new show coming. Yes. Marlon. Marlon on NBC. On NBC. I finally got uh, no more WB or CWs. I, I got a, I'm, I'm moving up the world. I, I'm on a network that got three letters in their acronym. So I'm, I'm trying to be somebody. So Marlon, yes. I saw the trailer for it. It's, so it's based on your relationship with your ex. With my, with my yeah, my children's mother. I don't even call her ex. I still call her baby. That's, you know, for, for the rest of my life, you know, we don't know what it is. It's just, mm -hmm. it is, and it's love. So, you know. That, That's your best uh, friend. That is. Sometimes, when she ain't mad at me. Do you subscribe to the uh, whole theory of once your vagina, always your vagina? No, you know, I, I, I mean, that, that's some pimp shit right there. But once mine, that's always mine. <laughs> I mean, my, my jizz ain't that strong, you know. Gotcha. My, it, only, it, it only lasts seven two hours. After that, it's whoever else's is in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can't jizz can't <laughs> fight for life, even though there's millions of them. They got they, they're like niggas in the street. <laughs> they got a good three days of scrap, and it's a wrap. Gotcha. Um, but I, I believe, like you know, love don't ain't about you know, a vagina is like. 3% of somebody, man. It's how you get along with somebody outside of the vagina that really counts. When you get old, ain't nobody having sex. That's a fact. We all, nobody, because old, older women ain't going to look at some soggy balls and go, yeah, I want that. And old, old guys going to look at the, the, the giant giant and be like, yo, that that looks fly. I want that right I now. I just want to say, Let's I've just never be really friends. looked at somebody's balls. I don't know what old balls look like. Go Google them and then tell me, are you going to be having sex when you get old? And that's I, why it's important for you to wear underwear. I Googled old vagina and I love women to death and sense. I think it's a beautiful piece, but it looked like a camel chewing oh. straw. And I was like... <laughs> I'm good. And I old, just want to be friends. And old penises look like trash too, because whenever <laughs> I walk in the know? gym and I see them old white men, <laughs> in old white men, Lord have mercy. They look like a, a hacky sack. Like they can. Oh kick, my you kick god! Go, oh, I'm not gonna they lie. Gotta kick their dick up in their hand and take a piss. This looks terrible. Yeah, that's, that's, that's oh old, that's Lord old, have old mercy! White man oh my god! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, ain't nobody <laughs> sucking that's that. Awful. You know? I've never seen that. He got hacky sack. His dick in his hand. He take this. Damn nigga! Let's take a piss. You're right. That doesn't look very appealing. It's not appealing, right? So that's why you just go. Let's tap out. Let's let just be see friends. What old vagina looks like? Oh, so, don't do this. So you're right. It's all about love at, at a certain point. Oh, at, okay. at a certain point, it's all about love and yeah. love. Love you can throw in any glass. <gasps> it takes. It, 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 show me. Can't. Show me the old vagina because the oldest vagina I ever seen was forty something. <laughs> Show me. Oh, no, this can't be what this is. Oh! <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy. <laughs> yeah, I felt like my face started <laughs> no, to turn to stone. I don't think this is real. Oh, oh my God, y'all, you pay the lights. <laughs> Turn the lights on, Taylor. Oh, my God. Now, you so, trying to make it romantic on here? Lights come off. I'm going to start taking clothes off and get dirty <laughs> up in here. So, so Marlon, what are you going to bring new to the sitcom world? 
Oh man, this is um, this is a new bit of old man with with the sitcom because uh, for me, um, I just wanted to bring truth, and it's a different kind of family sitcom. I mean, it's one that you haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. um, we all seen, you know, um, you know. I mean, uh, they want to erase the fact that he ever existed. They're trying to get this name out the dictionary, but he did a great show. It's, it's Cosby did Bill a Cosby, great absolutely. show, you know, and and it, it was truthful about his life. My life experience is truthful and it resonates for this audience. It's it's a different kind of right. TV uh, family with a different kind of TV dad. Um, I give my kids different advice, that, the normal advice. I'm a, I give real nigga advice to my kids. Like my daughter told me she was getting bullied and I was like, yo, am I? Sometimes you just gotta choke a bitch out. And <laughs> you know, and I went on, explained to her what you gotta do to protect yourself. And that's what the episode, you know, spawned from. It spawns from my real life, dealing with my real life situations and a real life situation that I'm in um, in terms of breaking up with somebody, but making that at the end of the day, your family is your everything. So just because your, your family's broken up, it doesn't mean that your family's done. It's just a new chapter in your love and your evolution of love. And so at my show, end of the day, it's a it's a, a love story. It's a family uh, show, but I'm ridiculous. I'm physical. It's like Cosby, if somebody made Martin a father. Mm. So okay. it's wild. It's ridiculous. It's edgy. It's youthful. It's, it's you know, it's, it's a real show based on my real life. And it, it's different because it got my flavor. So what I like about it is I've been known to go off out of bounds. I, I I'll fuck a stuffed animal for three 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 minutes. We know. We've seen. I, yeah, I'll get my ass licked. I'll, I'll get my ass, my salad tossed by a stuffed animal. And, you know, I, I don't give a fuck because when I zone out. How, make, you, Ed, how you how you clean up uh, getting your ass licked but then say, I don't, <laughs> I don't, then you gotta don't give a fuck. <laughs> but that's what I mean. I zone out. Uh, if this was live, I would, I would, see, if this was live, yeah. I would have found a way to say it and not curse because I'm just a pro like that. So being on NBC, I can't do that. So now I have boundaries. And what I love about having boundaries is I have to operate within those things but still yet be myself, which allows me to have a really potent two, um, uh, uh, 22 minutes of content. There's one minute of heart. I get to act, mm -hmm. like like to have that sentiment because I went to perform performing arts high school and there's things that people want to see from me. I get I have a romance because it's uh, the, my children's mom and you, know, you still love each other so you're handling that relationship and so for me these 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 projects I got my show Marlon and my movie on Netflix um, Naked it's my evolution uh, um, I'm finding it's one thing to be funny but it's nothing to be good and to be good you have to have good stories and to be good you have to have good grounded characters and a good story that propels you into the ridiculous so those are the things that I'm learning stepping away from parody and I actually bring that to my my stand-up now so I think I'm better as a comedian now because of what I'm saying mm -hmm. and how I'm saying it on stage. I'm still ridiculous. I still go, no, you do go, no, that nigga didn't, but you do leave going, man, I like what he had to say. Now, that, Marlon, are, are you, you sweating living? or is that activator? Are you, are you I'm sweating, man. Oh. <laughs> I just had a bag of <laughs> vitamins. Excited. Look at this. Oh. I know you're like, look, there ain't no coke in that. Look, everybody's like, Marlon be on drugs. I swear, people be like, Marlon be on drugs. I went to show y'all my <laughs> vitamins, vitamins and I went and ate them. I had 50 vitamins. I just took mine, too. I take 50 vitamins every day. I'm going to live. Oh, I'm sweating mine. because it's hot. I have my vitamins, too. Ooh, ooh, yummy. I don't cool. take 50. Oh, I take Listen, about, I take about 12. Those are for women. I don't think you should... No, I, okay. your, your cootie is right. That, that's righteous. <laughs> you, ain't, you don't get a lot of this. Well, I'm out. You don't get a, let, let's cuddle. Um, this, is, this is right, but I take literally 50 of these, Sheesh. and then I take 50 more. 50? 50 every day. Why? What 50, is it? About 100 vitamins, because I, I, the way I work, I'm like a, uh, I don't, I sleep three, four, Five hours. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha, you. But gotcha. I'm in it. I work out. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm producing projects. I'm, you know, uh, writing. I'm, you know, doing stand up. I'm traveling. I do so much that I have to make sure that my health is right. right. And I like to drink. So the problem uh -huh. of all this. So this right here <laughs> the, is cognac. It's, it's pot glycerin because I do put, um, I do put um, pomade in my hair, and it, it's not cognac. It's tequila. Okay. Yeah. Like when I walked in, here's how I know I like to drink. I walked in here and I see. You the walked bar. over to the bar. And, no, my mouth started. <laughs> you know how the old black man started doing this? <laughs> I got the taste. I got the sugars. I had the sugars. Now, <laughs> what um, the hell Marlon, is Naked? Um, naked is my movie um, that I got on Netflix that comes out August 11th. My movie comes out 
August 11th on Netflix, and my TV show comes out August 16th on NBC um, at 9 and 9.30. I'm trying. I'm working, brother. Um, so um, Naked is a romantic comedy with me and Regina Hall, and it's about a guy. Who, it's kind of like in the vein of uh, Groundhog's Day. It's about a guy who's supposed to marry his wife. He's not really ready for the wedding. He's ill-prepared like most men. Um, he goes out to have drinks on the night of his uh, bachelor party. He wakes up in the next morning, day of his Uh-oh. wedding, butt naked in an elevator. He has no idea how he got there. Um, there's a marathon going on across t- uh, going on in, in town. He's an hour and a half late for the wedding. Now, when, by the time he gets to his wedding, if he don't have the right suit, the right vows, the right um, the right ring, he has to start back over in the elevator, butt naked, over and over again, and repeat that same hour until he gives uh, the perfect wedding. Damn, it's like the Black Groundhog Day. It, it's like Black. Well, it's 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 in the vein of Groundhog Day, but it's 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 so different. You know, gotcha. it, it, it's a sweet movie. Regina kills it. Uh, Scott Foley, uh, Eliza Coop, uh my boy J T. Jackson's in it, and lastly, uh, Dennis Hainsburg. But it's a really funny movie, and I. I, I I, I'm, it's a Netflix and chill. Y'all nice. definitely Netflix gonna see it. I am sweating like. I like a rom com. Yeah. N- now, on Marlon, are you living in the house with your ex wife or you live next door? No, I live. Because it looks like you're in real always life. there. No. Oh, well, in your show. Oh, I got an open door. I go whenever I choose. Because I see she's dating on the. I saw in the trailer. On the trailer, she's dating. I mean, in real know, life. I don't. I, I, we don't, you know. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't you know. You popping up on the ex in real life? I, it's my family, man. I walk in, like, you know, we. It's love, you know. I, I let her know I'm coming sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm on the way. Sometimes I check, <laughs> sniff the bed when I come in. Any, any remnants of uh, be checking for little pubic, little curly pubic hairs? Like, nah, this one's not yours. <laughs> um, but nah, I, I go with those. My, that's my family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, they live in a dope ass house in the valley. I live in Hollywood Hills, mm-hmm. and I I take good care of my family. My family live. My my kids got a movie theater. Cause They're, you address her dating on. The show on the show that's like what if right that happened how would I it's going feel? to happen at some point you think in real life oh would well, the kids to... still have a movie theater if she starts dating somebody else <laughs> <laughs> a really little one <laughs> <laughs> it'd be a really like a screen room like <laughs> like what we call those like, the uh, little red things oh, yeah, yeah I forgot those. Yeah, I remember those I remember what, 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 I forgot what those called yeah, one of those. <laughs> but you know um end of the day man you know love is a funny thing you could pour it it's like water. It just pours into different glasses and it takes shape. And, you know, I just, I, I, I'm I blessed in my life to have found um, a thing, a person of, of that caliber. She's a wonderful, wonderful human being. Like, when she curses me out, I get it. I probably most likely definitely deserved it. And But the kids that she's raised, what she's done with my sperm and her eggs mm-hmm. is amazing. They're the amazing kids. Mm. My son's 15. He ain't never seen a jail. I'm so happy about that. My daughter, she gets all A's. She's so smart. The Asian kids cheat off her. She okay. is amazing. It was Amaya, her, what it you was got for number three? Right? Huh? It was just her birthday. Yeah, she just turned. My daughter just turned 17, but she got a heart. Wow. But she's still a baby. She's got a heart of like a a, a, a three year old man. She's just love. I mean, she, she gives me weird hugs, but that's okay. You know, mm, okay, dad. Yeah, but that's good. Down, I like that. Yeah. I'm a, yeah. But, you know, she's a great kid, man. I can't ask for... That's all you want in that's life it. is, you know, I got... I, even when she cursed me out, because she's half... People like, he got him a Asian girl. Baby mom's is half black. Well, I don't call her baby mom. She's half... My, my aunt just half black and half Japanese. And she's Japanese when it comes to the everyday life. But when she angry, um, that sister come out and she, she cursed me out for four months. Uh, one time. Four months? Yeah. Straight. Is it for something? For what? Yeah. I deserved it. Uh, tr- trust me, I deserved it. Some pictures. That's maybe when they was wild, when they scattered the <laughs> yeah, pictures yeah, of you on the boat yeah, wild. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Leave it alone. Yeah, we don't want to yeah, get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, let's not bring it up because I don't want to go through another two and a half months yeah, yeah, of yeah. the Vietnam veteran ship. Because mm-hmm. uh, she, she would call me up. You ain't nigga. <laughs> oh, I just want to go to the gym. Um, but she's a, she's a great person and... Um, the show is an ode to my family. My my kids, they go, Dad, you're wild. I said, what do you mean? They go, you're wild. I said, son, do you think I'm wild? My son said, nigga, you wild. I said, Ange, you think I'm wild? They all three looked at me and said, yeah. 
nigga, you don't think you wild? And I said, show me wild. And they went on my Instagram, uh -huh. and I was like, yeah, I'm wild. <laughs> well, they, they wild. They, they got the wild gene, too. It just ain't kicked in yet. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. They gonna have fun. No, I think... They weighing. Stop it. Come on, bro. Like, it's about... I don't think my son is. I think my son, he's actually... It, but he's gonna be a ball player so that he may have fun. But my daughter, she has this wild thing about it. Like, when we have drinks, she's always like, so what is that? I'm like, bitch, why are you asking? What you, what you so you call your daughter a bitch? Oh, that's her, my little nickname. Her little bitch. And, uh, mama, little bitch and her mama big bitch. I think I call her that now. Just when she get older, some, some nigga call her oh that. She ain't going to be tripping. <laughs> now look, I, love, I love when you Google people and headlines pop up with no context. So I Googled you this morning, and I saw the headline, Marlon Wayne says XWWE star is scared of Blake, big black penis. <laughs> oh, no, I actually, I, fo I followed that story. What the hell were y'all talking about? Because it was a, it's a black WWE uh, star, and she said that she doesn't date black men I only men date anymore. white guys. Oh, I'm like, okay, okay. So you no context. You're missing out. You, 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 got to try, you got to try some of this. All don't... black men don't have big penises. This one do. <laughs> you can call around. You can you, you, you Google. That's a shame that I can call you around. You can Google me. I got put it this way. I you know Google you got a, a a big joint when there's some there's some pictures I got that I wish leaked. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd be like, damn, I should leak this shit. It, it looked like a hookah, like nigga. And especially you catch the down angle, it looked like I'm sitting there with my friend. <laughs> see now, I Google Marlon Wayans' penis, and all it says is "All hell LeBron's penis." Marlon Wayans. All hell LeBron's Bron penis. Penis. What Bron see, penis? That's another headline with no me. context. What the f oh. LeBron. See, that's, 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 that's another. You gotta stop oh, drinking. That's when LeBron, you gotta stop drinking, Marlon. <laughs> no, that was. They catch me off the plane. I be sleeping. That's when LeBron uh, showed his, his jammy on um, accidentally when he was talking to oh, his jersey. Oh yeah, yeah, I and, heard about that. Yeah, and um, I don't see your penis. I gotta say, he's a great basketball player, but uh, uh, he could do a lot of things. But I got, I got him there. You got him in. I got him. <laughs> I got him just based on his size and the ratio of how tall he is to the ratio of so this girls go. That's so funny you say go, that. Some basketball players got a little. Dignity. I'm like they're basketball players. They're seven feet tall. Even if he had a nine inch piece, it's still gonna look little. It's I mean, gonna look like a belly button on a nine a nine foot tall. Nigga. I remember when Superhead was talking about Shaq, and she said that, and I'm like, what do you call little on Shaq? <laughs> like, yeah, it's all like, perspective. We, we, <laughs> 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 now, now I'm thinking about your track record, and I wonder why you chose <laughs> Netflix. I mean, chose uh, NBC over Netflix or Hulu or Amazon. Because, uh, like your kids say, you are wild, Marlon. Because um, I wanted to have boundaries, and I wanted to appeal to the broadest audience I could. And I, NBC is the home of you know some of the greatest sitcoms ever. You know, you got. Uh, Frasier, Seinfeld, Seinfeld right. Cosby. Cosby. You know, when it comes to making a hit show, they have had them. And I, even with Carmichael, you know, they let me be me. Out of all the, I've developed two shows with ABC, and they just didn't go. NBC, to their credit, and like some of the stuff on my show, you're going to go, they let him do that. <laughs> they let me be me. And that's all they ask is that Marlon, you be Marlon. There's episodes that I lean back and they go, you know, the episode's good stories here. We need more Marlon in this. I'm like, oh, okay, you're going to uncage the freak? And I get to do me. I film in front of a live audience because I need that 300 people there. That's why I'm on the road like I'm on the road because I need to have that audience that laugh I know when I went too far I know when I didn't go far enough and I keep pushing and the audience gives you this energy that makes you go all right I'm gonna I'm light this up so every take I got something different and the, the outtakes is gonna be hilarious like mm -hmm. I, some of the takes I do I do long takes so I'll I'll take one scene and I'll do a 25 minute take wow and you think I'm sweating here mm -hmm. I'll be I, I, mm -hmm. I'll be drenched I fainted on set one time <laughs> oh, I, you I fainted I was I'll be in it man what are those vitamins that like a hundred of them a day. What's in them? Vitamin B twelve. Vitamin all the B. So you know you can take too many vitamins. Nah, if you do, you, you just you? Pee, you pee them out. 
Okay. Yeah, that's when your pee be really bright orange. Like that bum piss. Yeah, that's <laughs> theirs is from beer. Mine's is from vitamins. Like if if you smoke my piss, it would give you energy because no there's so much vitamins in it. You could drink my pee and be no, like, yo, I'm good. That'd be the new five hour energy drink. It's just me me peeing in little bottles. All right, that's enough. Bring the, bring the next one. <laughs> hey, you, you said you know when you go too far. Uh, that just went too far just now. Right? But, uh, no, no, I don't I think so. But is that a mentality that? Is is uh conducive to being a good comic though? Uh, Having that, uh, I, I'm I don't I can go too far. You got to push it to the limit. I, you ha as a comedian, you have to go places that people aren't comfortable um, going themselves. They may think it, but as a comedian, we gotta take a fast flashlight and we go into dark crevices of our mind, of pop culture, of the world, of of the news, and we gotta go in there and we gotta come out with this little thing called a joke and a smile about something tragic. Mm -hmm. So in my set, I talk about everything. I talk about everything from uh, Trump to terrorism to, you know, to love to, to, to you know, to, to gay rights. I talk about everything in my, in my set at Caroline's where I'm there all weekend long. This weekend. Come out, yeah, yes. this weekend, Memorial Day weekend. Make sure y'all come out and check me out. It's The show is getting, it's getting good, man. It's getting, I feel it. Like, I, I didn't feel special till... This year, I'm feeling special. So um, uh, I haven't done one yet because I'm not in a rush to do to do a special just to do a special. I'm I'm in a rush and I'm hitting stages every night to get as good as I can get. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to do stand up at the age of 38. Mm -hmm. I chose to do stand up at the age of 38 because I I, I want to be great. I, I, it's like you know Michael Jordan learning to. Uh, Learning to shoot three pointers in his latter of his career. It's, you know, I look at Jordan, every year he learns something. This is something I had to do to become Marlon. I was always, the first 20 years I spent uh, developing in the Wayans camp. And now these next, these last five have been Marlon. And so that's why my show, Marlon, and my movies I'm doing, I'm finding who I am, I'm finding my voice, and stand up is really helping me crystallize who I am. So my best years are ahead of me. How much has politics seeped into your, your stand-up? Or do you feel like you want to keep it light? Just because no. you know people want to escape when they go see a, see you. I go there. I, if it's, I, I take a nice 20-minute, 20 25-minute chunk and talk about the politics. Or, I, I mean, I, I, it's because it's right now it's such a heavy topic. You got to go in there and you got to talk about all the different perspectives. I talk literally. You, I talk about everything. I talk about everything from hip hop to you know to 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 to, to Caitlyn. I talk. I talk about it all. What, what interests you about Trump now? Like what interests? Yeah, when you say you go into that dark crevice, like what what's what's there? Oh, <laughs> it, it just watch the news. Every time he opened his mouth, he got a joke. Yeah. I, I I think God did this. Because he was like, you know what, the comedians. Here's a gift to comedy. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna give you this, this joke as a comedian. I mean, as the president, and people are just eating it up. There's he, something to that though, because I mean, you look at somebody like Stephen Colbert. He's the number one nighttime. Yes, show. because he's Night working Live toward his, the, you're working toward the strength. Like this is strength is politics. Like yo, Trump is is magical. I can literally, if I want it, I could do 30 minutes. I could do an hour. On him alone, but you know I don't I don't I don't want to make it the Trump bashing show. So I do right. a nice five minutes. I give I'm an equal opportunity offender. I get five minutes. Pop 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 pop. I'm out. Next next topic. Pop 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 pop. It's like a boxer. Every round you come in, you do something different. Pow. My thing is every five minutes I want to laugh so hard that I earn the right to go get a sip of water. Mm. I'm sure Netflix is approaching you too about you know since you've been on the road, obviously working on stand up about doing a special. Um, I, I, I'm getting approached. It's, it's coming, mm -hmm. but um, it seems like it's a stand-up resurgence now. Yeah, because the world is going through such a crisis, man. It's like you know we need the jokes. You got you know so much fear and hate and terrorism and all these things is happening. We have to talk about this. Mm -hmm. You tired, brother? Look at you. You look like you. You look tired. Like, man, I should have had all that liquor last night. No, oh, no you don't that's even him. know. That's, that's definitely him. That's definitely him. Way too much weed. You should have seen him yesterday. Uh, hold you on, know? I'll show you. Y'all, y'all really doing really, really good over here because y'all, you got your own house turned and see you got a big buff ass bodyguard out there. Yeah. Because you, you need one because you talk a lot. Yeah. Um, and you got white hallways. You got your, uh, you're like <laughs> Howard Stern. Uh, white hallways with black niggas in. in in the room, and you got your own little Beetlejuice from Howard Stern over there. 
Yeah, tell me you don't look like Beetlejuice, brother. We, 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 I, I tell him that at least three times a week. <laughs> <laughs> he looks just like Beetlejuice. Oh, yo, Howard. Yo, that's right, that's right. He's just Charlie taller. He's just taller. <laughs> <laughs> now, who, 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 who do you yeah. like? Because you had Chappelle, uh, Michael Shea did a stand-up little Gerard round. Carmichael. Gerard Carmichael. Who do who inspired you out of those people? I think all of them inspire me. Mm -hmm. um, all my peers inspire That's me. That's the correct answer. No, I'm just being honest, man. I think this because when you when you're when you are a a a fan of comedy, and you have a respect for everybody's style, and if you are a smart uh, artist, you will be a good great student. And instead of breaking somebody down, I look at what they do great, and I go, wow. How how can I apply the mechanics of that to what I'm doing? Mm. I don't want to be that person, I, but I look like I I'll go to a D Chappelle show, and I went to a show. This man had twenty five thousand people, and Chappelle was so cool that he just sat there smoking a cigarette, <sighs> telling his jokes, and it felt no pressure. Twenty five thousand people, and he's just chill. He can make 25,000 people feel like he's talking to seven. And that is magical for me because when I get in front of 25,000 people, I literally can combust on stage from the <laughs> energy. I'm over here, I'm over there. I'm like I'm like I'm all over. I'm like a crack baby. I'm like a little squirrel <laughs> from Ice Age. I'm all over the place. He's just real calm and I love that about him that he could just sit in the pocket and 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 give you a great conversation. Mm -hmm. And I respect that about him. I respect that. Rock, you know, Chris Rock is brilliant. At, he's, they're both brilliant. And and I could talk about both those guys for days. I, you know, everybody got a, Rock is like a great preacher. Rock's what the he best said, to me, man. He's a, a great preacher, a wonderful writer. Uh, the things that he says and the way he connects and the way his mind thinks and, you know, he he brings you this way and then hits you that way and he don't mind saying it and he says it again and he says it again and if you get mad, he'll say it again. <laughs> and he don't, give, he don't give a fuck. And I love that about Rock and he's a tactitioner. He, he could tell he's sitting there going, uh, I like where this joke is going, but uh, let, me, let me sit here and work on this more before I go out with it. He likes to paint his thing all the way and and not just give you, Dave will paint in front of you and then paint some beautiful shit and go, I'll throw that out. But they're both different. If niggas talk shit about Kev, yo, Kev's a beast. Absolutely. Kev Hart is a beast. And you watch him on stage, he's lovable, he's funny, he's like his likability, and um, you know, he's a master salesman. You know, the dude, you you can't hate on that. There's nothing to hate. Haters will sit there and go, what are they doing wrong? People that love and really want great for themselves go, what are they doing right? And instead of going, I'm not poking holes in people. I'm just going, I'm inspired right. to be as great yeah, in my own way. Because you don't get no positions if you suck. No. Like, it's just you just don't. No, like you may not like that what that person is doing, but just like that person doesn't suck. Like, yeah, you can't you can't hit the top, or else your 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 reign will be over right away. Yeah. When you've been in the game as long as niggas have been in the game, Rock has been in the game how long? Chappelle's Shit. been in the game how long? I've been in the game how long? Kev's been in the game how? Like, this is not like yo overnight. It was beautiful. Like for me, I look and I go, I've been in here the game for twenty five years. I still feel young. I still look young, and my best years are ahead of me. Mm -hmm. My stand up is getting. Solid. I'm feeling good, mm -hmm. and I'm watching the people leave. I'm seeing what they tweet, and and uh, you know I'm feeling good. I'm, my best years are ahead of me, so I, I'm I'm looking forward to you know showing the audience what I do. When I do a special, I'm probably gonna call it "Allow Me to Reintroduce Myself" <laughs> because people don't know I do stand up, and when they come out and they see me, they're like, I, "I didn't know you was like I was expecting jokes, but I didn't know you had that." And I was like. Yeah. Why Somebody do you think just trademarked that, that just now. Yeah. What? Allow me to reintroduce myself. I hope I did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Lawyers, if y'all watching, please trademark that for me. Why do you think that when we have the conversation about the greatest comics, I never hear women mentioned in that conversation? I think you do. There's some uh, I mean, really not in this room. Brilliant. I haven't ever heard anybody Because we're a bunch of guys. A... But, you know, there's some really funny uh, f females out there, you know. I like uh, Joan Rivers. Ollie, Ollie Wong. Jolie, Joan Rivers is brilliant. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. She catalogs the jokes. 
Uh, Ali Wong is funny as hell. Everybody you know? keeps saying that. I haven't li- watched She's funny enough. as hell. Well, Truthful, uh, go biting. Sure you know, that. even, you know, uh, 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 people talk nonsense about Shuma. Shuma got jokes. Shuma, Shuma got jokes. Man. Shuma got jokes. She got blocked on Twitter. On Instagram, so he's not. What'd you do? I was watching a special one day and I was like, I don't get this Amy Schumer shit. Okay. <laughs> watch the right one. Don't yeah, watch yeah, the yeah. leather one. Watch one of her earlier ones. Like that and, and watch, you really want to get a good, watch that movie that she did with Judd Apatow. That girl got range, dude. She's funny, she's biting, and she can act. Like she can literally I like her in act. movies. Yeah. I, she was in, uh, wasn't she do Trainwreck with LeBron? Wasn't that her? That yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, that movie is funny, yeah, and funny. that comes from a perspective. She had a perspective about life and uh, the way she thinks. She's a funny girl. I mean, you sometimes it's hard to be funny all the time, and sometimes it's not your taste. But for a certain audience, you know, like white females love her. So you have to think like a white female. I have to put, put my white chick's makeup on and watch her show, and it'll make <laughs> me laugh. But she's a funny girl, man. And and, and, and I, I look at comedy, and I go, we you know, we're all... Uh, a, a, a family of of, of uh, it's like a comedic brother sisterhood a fraternity yet a sorority mm-hmm. and to be funny is the hardest thing in the world to do so I got nothing but respect for anybody that gets up every night fearlessly and does their own material you don't I don't like I don't have writers and all that I like to write myself I because I'm testing my mind I go I go on stage and I go I like to do a hot five because I thought about a way over mm-hmm. here so I think to be creative and continue to be, um, uh, what, what's the word? Uh, in, in, um, innovative. Innovative and be yourself. Don't, don't take, that's the one thing I don't like when people take people's jokes. Don't do that. Don't do that. You'll never find your voice doing somebody else. Do you. Right. I know my gifts. I'm physical. I get off stage. My T-shirts, D-Ray said, mm-hmm. my, I work so hard, <laughs> my T-shirt is melting. Because I'll be on stage and I'll be grinding, man. It's like, pop, 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 Good night. But, you know, for 60 minutes, I'm rolling. So Is it really a black renaissance going on in Hollywood? It seems like it. Says who? You don't see if it? So, sh- if so, nigga, show me where it's at because I don't see it. Where you see it? I, I mean, I'm, I, I think it started Two with- niggas get a show and it's a renaissance? <laughs> <laughs> nigga, please. <laughs> But it started with Empire and then like Blackish and you got Insecure, you got Atlanta, you got the Carl Michael show. Yeah, but that's because there's so many networks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That a, you know, it, it's so many networks right now. So right. everyone you named is on a different network. Not many networks got yeah. this, like a bunch of black shows. Only NBC six shows. got my show and the Carl Michael show. But see, I I love the that we're getting more opportunities. I'm glad that there's more networks. I'm glad to see. I think you know Hispanics need you know more more exposure. I think Asians need more. I think blacks need more. I think everybody. Need look, we have little people on television. Yeah. You know, everybody deserves to have their point of view of their show, of their life, because there's an audience for that show. By the way, speaking of little people, that little one on um the look, there's a little person <laughs> that looked like J Lo on what? that little people show. I was watching that the other day, and I was call saying, me she's crazy. Really I was you That's gonna you gonna judge me. I was sitting there in my disgust. That's you know how funny. you get in that disgusting that. part of your mind like, yo, for real? I fucked that bitch. <laughs> 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 you start thinking about it and you get a little ass, you throw up and shit. Get your, get a, make a, put up, come here and put my dick on your head. You know, I, I just beat all over the place, hit on my dick, make a nosebleed. Mm, come here. I'm sorry about that. Marlon, you're yes. going to have about three misogynistic think pieces written about you. <laughs> you. You called your daughter a bitch. You, you called a little, little person, person a bitch. bitch. You called your wife, your ex-wife. <laughs> but, wife. but I do it in jest. You know, I do it in jest. Here's the it. thing. No, but here's the thing. You, well, about, say you know what I've been saying? No, but about, about the word. The words, it's the way, reason why I say nigga, right? Mm-hmm. Is because it's not about the word. It's about the connotation of the word. My kids went to school. They wasn't called a nigga, but... Some little boy in one day school was calling them muffins. Muffins? And I was like, what's a muffin? <laughs> and the motherfucker was calling them muffins. And he was looking at all the black kids calling them muffins. And I was sitting there going, this motherfucker called my kids a nigga <laughs> through a muffin. I started looking at muffins like, why would he, what does nigga and muffin got to do with You're each other? You holding the muffins up to your kids and see their same complexion? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> like if it's blueberry, are those the little moles on your yeah. face? Like, what's the, but it's not about, so therefore, it's not about the word. It's oh. about the connotation, not the denotation of the word. It's about how you use the word. I could say in terms of endearment, I have five sisters. We joke all the time. I, they I, they call me motherfucker. I call them bitch, and that's just the way we love each other. It's like certain in certain neighborhoods. In, in my neighborhood, certain white boys. What's up, my nigga? I don't even yeah, trip because yeah, yeah, yeah. you we grew up together, and right. I know if somebody from that block was to say something, you gonna be the first person right by my side whooping that dude's ass. So it's all about the connotation. I'm, what if you're I, in bed with a white woman and she's like, "Let's role play. I'm gonna be." Well, then that's that's the agreement y'all make. Sometimes that could be fun, you know. Let's get the chains out and play, play, and play, play roots. <laughs> you know, just don't. They, and here's the thing: you just go, just don't tell nobody. Don't let the black woman find out about this. Don't tell them. <laughs> but they, it would suck if I'm in bed and you know you pull a, pull a sister's hand and go, yeah, bitch. What you call me? Hold up. You think she gonna stop? Like, hold up. You gonna call me what? Afterwards, she'd be like. She might. You get with the right pro black <laughs> feminist one. You might. <laughs> you might. But that would be a bad. That'd be bad sex. But she'll play along. It's all about right. the moment. It's all about what you mean. People that know me know my heart. And you can ask anybody anywhere. Not many people got anything bad to say about me. I'm a kind, sweet, wonderful dude who's uh, a little bit uh, different. And who thinks a certain way, he's a little wild, but at the end of the day, people know my heart. And when you see my show, when you see the things I'm doing, you're gonna go, that motherfucker's crazy, but there's something very sweet about him. And that's the one thing about me that I walk with. I walk with God first, and 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 I, I practice that through my actions. You could ask anybody on my set what kind of person am I to work with. Ask anybody that I, I go to press with, all the comedians that work with me, I'm nothing but love. I got nothing but good advice for people. I, you know, if I, if I know something, I'm like, yo, you should do this. I'll work that on your deal. I, yeah, because Marlon was just giving me some advice right before the show. What are you gonna do with jewels? If, you, right. if you just hold on to jewels, you got coal. And if you pass them shits on, they mean something. So everything that I got, I try to pass on. I pass on with love. So anybody that's sensitive, I tell them, fuck off. Don't you, watch my shit you write a, I ain't for you. You write about connotation, because I had two homeboys who was about to fight over a bottle of ketchup. Because they was already arguing. <laughs> they was already arguing, and they was mad at each what? other. South Carolina? <laughs> South Carolina. That is some uh, South Carolina. Uh, Holy South South Carolina. That sound like Charleston to me. <laughs> that <laughs> sound like Charleston to me. It was actually Columbia, my homeboy Frosty. But they was already arguing. And so when my homeboy opened the refrigerator, he was like, you ain't got no ketchup? <laughs> My other man got ketchup and he slammed the door. And they were really about to fight. You mean I ain't got no ketchup? Like, y'all just about to fight over? Like, so I can see it was hot sauce. He <laughs> yeah, ain't fighting about ketchup. Yeah, we ain't, ketchup we ain't ketchup. <laughs> now, have you seen the Pac movie yet? Pac no. Was, okay. No, I haven't. But th you know what? I saw the trailer and the dude looked like Pac. Right. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, had yeah. the same Snuffleupagus eyes as Tupac. I used to call Pac Snuffleupagus because he, he was this gangster, right? He was all hardcore. But he had these, the, this, he had the most beautiful eyes. You look in his eyes, he's just, you just find yourself just magically, <laughs> whimsically feeling like, oh my God. Snuff did have them long yeah. eyelashes. He had eyelashes, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. like Snuffleupagus. <laughs> I used to call him Snuffleupagus. He had that, and Pac had these really soft hands. Like, I used to call him Pal the Pamala Thug because his hands were so soft. I'm like, how do you even punch somebody with these? You, uh, like, hold on, time, time out. Let me put my gloves on before we fight. <laughs> I got a manicure tomorrow. Chill, chill, chill. His, but he, Pac, I talk about him with love because, you know, that was my my boy. Um, I met him when he was doing Juice with Omar. Mm -hmm. And Omar Epps is my best friend. We went to Performing Arts High School. I was in Howard University. They were doing Juice. I came up to the set of Juice. My boy Mitchell, who's a writer now in Hollywood and does this comedy, produces with me on my show. Um, he was in Juice as well. He was the guy to get... You got the juice now, man. Oh, at the end. At the end, yeah. That's one of my <laughs> best friends, me, him, and Omar. So <laughs> That's a very pivotal part of that movie. Yeah. He, he hated that night. line. Oh, <laughs> he's going to be so mad we talked about you this. Juice Yo, man. You, you got, got the juice, juice now, now. Man. You know how many people, they, you know what they see? They're like, nigga, that's juice. That's the juice, man. Yo, you got the juice now, man. That's his, what you talking about, Willis? Like, <laughs> By the way, that's one of the most corniest lines now. <laughs> when you Back then it was hard. When you yeah. watching that, like, man, who says that? You just killed, you watch the man kill somebody. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> but you know, but, but I'm like, you ain't shit, Mitch, because you know, in your youth, you know what I mean? It, 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 like, it was a good three year pocket 
after he did it, that girls was giving him some because of that one line. That one line. But they would ask him to recite it while he was having sex. Say it. You got the juice now, girl. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me get us start talking, my boy. He's gonna be mad at me. Now, how, how do you feel about? So we okay. all came up together. Me, Omar, um, Mitchell. We went to perform at high, performing arts high school. Pac went to performing arts high school in I think Baltimore with Jada. Mm-hmm. So and me and Jada were good friends. So me, Pac, Omar, and Mitch used to hang out. And although he was going through all his thug stuff, we we hung out like performing arts high school kids. And me and Pac did an interview when we did Above the Rim, and you could watch how much fun right. yeah. we had. He wasn't like thug Pac to me. Mm-hmm. Pac was just like a dude I went to school with. Like we laughed. He was silly. He was a good, good, good guy that just made some bad choices, man. Right. And but people don't realize he was only 24 years old. He's, when he died, he's right. a baby. I saw him the night he died. Me and Omar Mitchell saw Pac. He was getting in the car at the Luxor. Well, the night he got shot. The night he got shot. Yeah. 20 minutes before he got shot. Went over, uh, gave him a hug. So what's up, house fan, blah, blah, blah. Gave him a hug. He got in the car. Me and Mitchell and Omar, we got in the cab. Because, you know, we we wasn't rocking like that. And he got in the car with all these people. Sure. And, yeah, and then, uh, you know, tw- we heard he got shot, man. And so, you know, I... I it, Do you remember y'all last convo? Yeah, I remember I saw him outside the Luxor mm-hmm. yeah, just, right before. He, I remember what he had on. He had on a, his, like a, a basketball jersey and, you know, went over there and gave him a hug and we talked, had everything. I, I, I was, he had a lot of, lot of, lot of, he had a lot of brothers out there. Goons. That, they, they had some goons. I didn't want to get too close to the goons because they, they, they look real goony. So I didn't, I didn't, I, I was, the, 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 the performing arts high school kid in me was doing plies over here. So I, <laughs> I gave him a quick hug and kind of started going for the cab. And, um, you know, because some of them look like the color of violence. You know, the, mo- <laughs> the color of violence? Yeah, yeah. What is the color of violence? He had like Marlin? a dull shine. You know, <laughs> nigga look like a Glock 45. The white people, the color of violence is black, Marlon. What is the color of violence? <laughs> well, this, this, this kind was even to brothers. It was like, yeah, he had a dull shine. <laughs> Like one of them wood statues that your mama have on on in the house, <laughs> one of them African carvings that you think come to life in the night. Um, so I saw him the the, the night he passed, and um, me, Omar Mitchell, you know, it was kind of like you know God put him there for us to say our peace, say what's up, give him love, and um, move on. And that was a sad moment, man. And so when people talk about Pac, you know, I I I I did a movie with him. I knew him, and I I, I miss him I, today. Misses him. He would have been such a a uh, at this point. It would be about being a rapper. This is when the um, the the militant mm-hmm. in Pac would have came out. This type of uh, stuff that's happening. He would have been so outspoken. He would have been uh, a leader for our community. I think, um, especially to the youth of 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 defying all that's going on. Right? How do you feel about people that talking down on Pac now? Like like it's like twenty years later and people. I mean, everybody, everybody going to have their story. It's like, is your story true? Is your story, what are you saying about him? I, my truth is different than somebody else's truth mm-hmm. right. because I knew him, so I can only speak from my experience Let the man with him. Rest in peace, though. I mean, come on. I mean, well, who, I feel uh, who like got people it? Are, are trying to dog him out. And what are they saying? That we don't even know that he killed himself. He's responsible he for being killed. He shot himself. Yeah, he's responsible who, for being killed. No, I mean, I, I don't think he's responsible for. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I wasn't in in the. I don't know. I don't know. I did. I think that a lot of that stuff. I I wish they would have quelled mm-hmm. him and Biggie were boys. So I wish they would have just came together. It got out of hand, mm-hmm. and then when you get other people involved, it gets all the way out of hand. Then yeah. you get the the world. The whole world was involved in two guys' beef. It's bad enough when you got three people involved, and there's somebody in the middle, of, and somebody's an instigator. Oh, oh, you heard what she said about you? Oh, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, gonna yeah. take that? Yeah. Oh, oh, he said your shoes is stupid. Oh, you, <laughs> why you got heels on sneakers? Oh, yeah. you gonna, hey. and you go back and forth. Yeah. Imagine you got Your the world sneakers. doing that, instigating a battle between two friends, Where? and nobody gonna play the parent and go, hey, hey, my mama, when me and my boys do that, and she seen somebody outside doing that, my mama will come downstairs and go, hey, wait, you, you go play. Marlon, Danny, you guys are friends. Y'all come sit down and stop doing this. Mm-hmm. Y'all gonna be brothers tomorrow, so why are you doing this now? Because of them. So nobody played the mediator. So and in his passing, you know, if you wanna do anything, help solve the murder. 
That's all. But don't don't speak about a, a, a bad about the man because he's gone. Now, when it comes to hip hop, when you see guys like Lil Uzi Vert, Young Thug, and people clowning them about how they dress, do you want to make jokes or do you you don't want to feel like the the uncool old man? You just let him be, kind of. Oh, if it's funny to me, I'm talk about it. Right, right, right. Yeah, you know, you talking about you talking about the, the dude with the with the perm, with the perm, and the, the, <laughs> with, 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 with the blouse. I, I just want to see him in the salon <laughs> <laughs> with the curlers in it. <laughs> I want to see the process. <laughs> I want to see the process of the process and stuff like that because you know men are now wearing purses. That's the thing. I don't know. Look, I, I, you know, I'm a. I, I, it's style and fashion mm-hmm. is. F- Style and fashion. Um, I can't be mad at somebody the way they dress. You know, I, I'm, I'm I'm a performing arts high school kid, right? Um, and what I've learned is you let people be people. That's their expression of themselves. Right. They're not saying that you should, they're not making that's, you dress like that. That's Uzi. You didn't see that? Is this Halloween? No, that's <laughs> no, that was like last week. He rocking that Goyard though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a lot of girls sitting there going, this, he got that Goyard, Uzi, Uzi. Rock. How you have a name like Uzi and you got a dress in a, a Goyard bag? But you know what? Here's the thing. In fashion, if that's the way that brother wants to express himself, right. it's like a kid, it's like um, kids having free dress in school. Mm-hmm. You want to dress like a superhero on Friday? Brother, dress like a superhero on Friday. Right. If that's what you want to do, you let people be people. Who am I to judge anybody for anything? That's like my parents going, hey, pull your pants up. Why are you wearing your pants so low back in the 90s? Why are you wearing them baggy Absolutely. jeans? I could fit in those jeans. Look, man, um, just because you wear uh, uh, baggy jeans don't mean that you know you don't sw- swing a certain way. If it's fashion, wear what you want to wear. Right. I mean, I'm not and then judging all nobody. History, you see what people used to dress like, and it looks weird to us now. Even when I could just were... tell Lil Uzi though. Th- I'll tell you right now from my experience from doing white chicks, that's some real uncomfortable gear you got on, sir. <laughs> and that wind come up. That wind come up in the winter time. Your balls will freeze. He said the fabric's great of the shirt. I don't know. Look, right. <laughs> look, look, you go. You, that, that's it. You wear that in the winter time. Your you, your ding ding gonna be real small. It get cold down there. Trust me. I did a movie called White Chicks, and that breeze changed your life. He said he did a movie like White Chicks, like we didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> now the Marlins gonna be at Caroline's all weekend. Yes, that's right. The show Marlin debuts on NBC. Yes, a- NBC. Uh, 9, 9.30, August 16th. And Naked on Netflix. Naked on Netflix, August 11th. Um, y'all ain't got to pay for it it's, unless you got ne- Netflix. is the one movie you can't bootleg. Although I know Negroes, we'll you will find a way. I know about you the Fire Stick. Way, yeah. I'm telling all y'all right now about we'll the Amazon Fire Stick. I got you. <laughs> um, so, But make sure you, you guys check out uh, uh, the movie and watch my TV show. This is the evolution of me. I ask people to please um, come see my show's when I'm live, uh, because I want y'all to see what I'm doing, uh, the, the work I'm putting in, and uh, you know I don't know where it's going, uh, but I know I'm doing the work, and that's all I could do. So I'll be at Caroline's. I'm gonna come check you out. Check it out. Let me know what mm-hmm. you think. Hey, she's gonna talk about me if I if I bomb. Oh, she's gonna I'm gonna talk about you. So I went to see Mom. <laughs> How was it? Mm. <laughs> this is my final question. It, it it seemed like with the Wayans, y'all help each other, but y'all don't. Give handouts to each other. So to no, speak. you can't, man. Yeah. You got to earn your way. Look, man. At, and at a point, you got to go find you. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what. Even for myself, I, I came up in the camp. I got a niece coming up under me, Shantae, who's absolutely hilarious. Um, I, um, I, I got uh, all my other nephews coming up, and Dame you know, Wayne's my, Junior, Dame yeah. Wayne's Junior, Craig, Craig is a writer on my show. When they're ready. You give them that opportunity. If they want to train, my daughter, she wants to do this. So I told her, I'm going to train you like a Jedi. Right now, she could play piano. She could sing. A, a, oh, my God. If I could, if I could just play this, I, I don't. it's on my phone. But she could sing. She could play piano. She could um ukulele she can she can write she's just an, uh, she can act her ass off she's a very talented mutant and it, it, when you're ready but you gotta do the work the work is the most important thing that you will ever do when we did Don't Be A Menace my brother made us do 26 drafts of a script before we even went to shoot damn if you want it and you want it to be great you want to make a movie you want to make a classic and that's what he taught us don't, don't, we want to make a movie we want to make a classic a classic is something that 
30 years from now, people still come up to me and go, yo, don't be a menace. Mm-hmm. They quote lines to me. I get called kids. a coon all the time <laughs> because I call white girls Nubian white queens. <laughs> And I'm thinking they people get the joke, but I forget I'm older than them. That's right. You think pieces about me? <laughs> it's from that movie. Oh, that's hilarious. Can you can you pass that? Can you just pass that white woman? Tap that white girl. With me? <laughs> yeah, man. We try to make classics, man. I want to make some. Uh, all I want to do, and and, and yeah, um, I think it's we put them on at the right time. But I can't grant you a career. I can grant you an opportunity, right. but. I'm doing you a disservice if I grant you an opportunity and you're not ready for it. So why don't you, everybody wants to be famous. Mm -hmm. Don't be famous, work on being good. Fame will come, just go be the greatest you through your efforts every single day and one day you'll get the opportunity because if you don't, failure, you won't know how to come back from failure. Can you come back from your lowest moment? And if you mm. didn't do the work, you ain't coming back. Mm. To have a career, I've been doing this now 30 years. No, uh, 25. Wait, 30 years. Yeah. So, and I'm still in the beginning of my next phase to me, which is the mauling phase. Right. I've, I've gotten all the, and it, you want the long, there's a marathon, it's not a sprint. I'm not in no rush. I'm just getting better every day, and in one day, it's undeniable. Absolutely. That's Marlon Wayans. Why all the best life lessons come from comedians? Marlon and Kev come in here, feel like pastors was in here. <laughs> <laughs> because, man, you know what? We 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 bear our souls to right. the world every day. Therapy, comedy is like Yeah, therapy man, and then we do the work. Did it stages, you, you know how desperate you gotta be to this to get up, I got an awful plane to come here. I got press all day. I'm gonna barely get no sleep. Then you got shows. And sometimes I do I like to do three or shows, three or four shows a night. Mm-hmm. Why? Why are you doing so many shows? Because one day I'm gonna be playing a, a, a stadiums. And I'm a, I'm gonna play you know the garden, and after the garden I gotta go to you know to Philly to do a show, and then after that I gotta fly to do two shows in New Orleans. I'm building myself to be a beast, and it, the more you work, the better you get, the better your stamina gets. So at the lowest levels, work your hardest because one day you're preparing for greatness. You're not preparing for a moment. You're preparing for greatness, and that's the work I'm doing. Well, thank you, Marlon Wayans, for coming to join us today. <laughs> Go see Preach him at- on that. <laughs> Take that, niggas and bitches. <laughs> Go see him at Caroline's this weekend. Watch his TV show when they come out, his movie when they come out. We thank Marlon, you for joining August us, August 16th, 9 yes. and 9.30. Really funny show. It's a family show. You can watch it with the kids. Believe it or not, it got a little tight taste of naughty, but it's really funny. And naked, you can watch it with your girls. It's a great Netflix and chill. It's a great romantic comedy. Me and Regina Hall. Um, and my show, me and Essence Atkins, I'm, I'm telling y'all, we bring in some, something special to 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 the to the TV. Um, and I'm not just saying this. It's, it's a special show. You will laugh out loud the entire time, except for one minute of some heart. Word. It's Marlon Wayans, y'all. It's The Breakfast Club. Hey, hey, hey. The Breakfast Club. Every weekday morning, tune in.